Hey guys, so we have post new moon and cancer energy that we need to talk about this week and there is a lot of it. There is a lot happening, a lot going on. We are in a very critical week actually of this 2023 year in terms of the significance of the energetic shifts and activations that are playing out. There is a huge universal push for rebirth, fresh starts, forward movement, progress in a new direction. However, simultaneously this week, there is also some type of stagnation or some limitation or some restriction or irritation or frustration or holdback or challenge that we need to overcome, that we need to persevere through in order to really start making some progress in this new direction. Lots of aspects going on this week. Of course, we had the nodes change signs, shift from Taurus and Scorpio into Libra and Aries. We also have an exact sun Neptune trine this week. We also have an exact Saturn Mars opposition. We have Venus going retrograde and uh, we've got this grand cross in cardinal signs at 29 degrees. Some of the most significant and critical aspects that there are in astrology kind of happening simultaneously this week you guys so we're in the thick of it big changes on the way but perhaps some things that we need to overcome in order to get there let's get into this energy let's talk about how this week is looking like for us um how things may be playing out and what perhaps we can anticipate as we move through this energy this week Welcome back, you guys. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the day where we are narrating the shift of the ages on this channel. We are looking at the energy as it's coming together on a daily basis, but we are doing that in the context of this grand unfolding, greater overall shift and transition of ages that is pushing us towards the age of Aquarius right now. So yes, we are analyzing the energy as it's coming together and the impacts that it may be having for us day to day, but we are also doing this in the understanding of how these smaller changes over time are actually creating these bigger changes that are transitioning us into this new frequency based reality, also known as the age of Aquarius. So that's what we're doing on this channel. I also, if you guys stick with me till the end of this report, we're also going to be doing a looking at some tarot cards that came out for us today as well. I also in correspondence with these videos, I like to do a collective tarot reading for us just so that we can tap the energy field from more than one modality help to get a more holistic overview of what is playing out for us energetically on any given day. So we're going to do that as well. Uh, there may be some messages in there for you if you want to stick with me until the end. That's where that's going to happen. But today we are primarily focused, we're looking at the energy for Wednesday, July 19th and also Thursday, July 20th, but we're specifically going to be focusing on Thursday, July 20th, because that is really sort of like the epicenter and the focal point of the activations that are coming into fruition this week, as that is the day that they will be exact. Now, Tuesday, yesterday, Wednesday, today, when this video goes out, and then of course, Thursday are really very much being colored and influenced by the transits that are coming exact on Thursday. So, you know, therefore we're really going to spend it, put like a closer focus on Thursday with the understanding that a lot of what we've been feeling on Tuesday, a lot of what we're dealing with on Wednesday is um, a result of what is pending on Thursday. So all of that being said, we are in a time right now, this week, this, uh, and, and next week also, this last two weeks of the month of July, funny enough, coming and happening synchronistically in exact alignment with our new moon and cancer cycle, which cancer is a cardinal sign. We have four cardinal signs. We have four cardinal directions. Cardinal energy is action oriented energy. This is when, you know, things are happening, changes are taking place. This, these are the more dynamic uh, seasons of the year in terms of things actually happening, I guess we could say. And cancer, cancer season is very much uh, in alignment with that. And it's also interesting, you know, in in the tarot, the chariot is a card that is representing cancer energy as well. And so there is a lot about like action, forward movement, change, things happening whenever we're dealing with any cancer cycle. And of course, we just had our new moon in cancer on Monday to open our week, which happened to be an exact alignment with the nodes of the moon ending a year and a half long transit of Taurus and Scorpio and entering or beginning a brand new year and a half long transit through Libra and Aries, these cardinal signs. So lots of cardinal energy going on right now, you guys, which means this is going to be a very action oriented things happening, like no more holdback, like 
progress, forward movement, uh, season, time of year, like just time generally. However, and this is something that we're going to be dealing with this week, you know, I mentioned it in my intro, we have Mars ruling the sign of Aries, where the North Node just moved. The North Node, this is destiny, okay, this is um, evolution, this is this is growth, this is, these are the lessons that we need to learn in order to progress in our lives and in our experience some way. And the North Node is moving into the sign or has moved into the sign of Aries. Aries is ruled by Mars. It's also the first sign of the zodiac. Aries is the sign all about like the spark of life and like going in a new adventure and like launching out and being independent and like taking a risk and like having courage and like motivation and like being the warrior and you know like rushing into the battlefield like all of that. There's not a lot of holdback when we're dealing with the Aries energy. However, as the nodes transit into the signs of Aries and Libra, and we have this North Node energy, you know, this next phase of growth where we're being pulled towards in this Mars dominant sign, we simultaneously have Mars in an opposition with Saturn. Now, Saturn limits things, it restricts things, it controls things, it holds them back. Saturn's got the rings, you know, it's contained. So while there is this massive push on one hand right now energetically with all the cardinal energy, being in the Cancer cycle, having the nodes, having just started a brand new transit and in the sign of Aries, the energetic influence that really would be driving all of this forward is in an exact face-off with the planet that restricts, that slows down, that holds back, that represses. Not only that, now that we have the nodes in the signs, cardinal signs of Libra and Aries, nodes always move backwards. So the last degree that the nodes hit in Taurus and Scorpio before they ended their transit was zero degrees. The first degree that the nodes hit when they begin their transit of Aries and Libra is 29 degrees. 29 degrees of any sign is a critical degree because it's the last degree of that sign. It's like the, it holds like all the energy of that sign. It's like the full breadth of the like the frequencies and the potentials and the octaves and you know the the manifestation energy that is held within that sign and so whenever we have a planet at 29 degrees of any sign this is like adding additional um like power and intensity and purpose and force okay to what that planet is doing now we have as we've recognized both of the nodes just entered their new signs which puts them both north and south node destiny and karma the north node is destiny the future the next path path of growth growth what we're evolving into but the south node this is the past this is karma this is the lessons that we've learned and this is what we need to detach ourselves from right now so we've got these two very important like components of like the past and the future where we're where we've been and where we're going and indicating both endings and beginnings in quite a significant way because we're dealing with a new signal polarity right now this is um you know it, it's impacting for all of us a new area of life depending on where aries and libra now fall in our own natal charts whereas for the previous year and a half the house associated with taurus and scorpio was being impacted by the nodes so this is changing things in some way for all of us However, with the Mars situation going on and with the 29 degrees of Aries and Libra, where the nodes are, we also right now have Pluto retrograde at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Capricorn is another cardinal sign. The cardinal signs are Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, Libra. So we've got the nodes, 29 degrees, critical degrees of the cardinal signs of Aries and Libra. We currently have Pluto retrograde, 29 degrees of Capricorn for his last like little bit of presence in Capricorn for the next like 250 years. Um, it takes Pluto like 20 years to transit one sign of the Zodiac and we are heading towards Pluto's full immersement and transit of the sign of Aquarius, which is really going to be bringing a level of like deep internalized and psychological subconscious self empowerment back to the collective of humanity. But before we can get there, there are still some external power structures, authority and rules and regulations and, you know, governments and systems of power and control associated with our previous 
3D matrix and paradigm that need to uh, come down, that need to be broken down to some extent. And that is what Pluto is currently doing back in the sign of Capricorn at 29 degrees. So we've got both nodes at 29 degrees, Aries and Libra, cardinal signs, and we've got Pluto, death and rebirth, um, destruction, but purge, purification, regeneration, ultimately the phoenix rising energy. And Pluto also, at its deepest and purest and most highest octaves and levels, rules transformation, rebirth, regeneration, healing, and also like deep and true forms of wealth. So there is something regarding those topics and themes that still needs to be regenerated, reworked, purged, purified, somehow evolved as well okay and then just to sort of uh you know make things a little bit more challenging for us as we are introduced to this new lesson plan being brought to us by the nodes of the moon and aries and libra we also synchronistically happen to have the sun itself transiting the late degrees of cancer right now as we are in our cancer season and we just had our new moon in cancer so we are this week very 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 thick in the crosshairs of a grand cross, which is, you know, one of the most powerful and challenging aspects in all of astrology. In cardinal signs, these are the action-oriented, very powerful signs at 29 degrees, this critical powerhouse degree, crisis-oriented degree to some extent, of these cardinal signs grand cross cardinal signs 29 degrees and then the planets involved north and the south nodes of the moon destiny and karma and the sun and pluto like major purge and purification like on these deep like soul-based levels this is definitely uh setting up a scenario that could be presenting some type of significant challenges that we need to overcome in order to be released to move forward in this new direction that the north node's presence in the sign of aries is indicating mars again ruling the position of the north node right now and the exact opposition to saturn retrograde this week as well this is telling us that there is something that we need to overcome that there is some limitation either internal or external that there is some level of like personal leadership or like personal will that we need to exert perhaps over external authority in order to in somehow in some capacity like move ourselves forward or there just is there's some like lifestyle change or habit that we need to switch up or there there's something that we need to overcome there's something that we need to change or there's something that we need to persevere through in order to really like allow this progress to begin to start happening and honestly like it's going to happen naturally and organically as this energy unfolds but that is just how it's setting up and we are really like in the midst of some serious uh like i said crosshairs of tension and um just challenge this week now another thing that this energy is likely to provoke and that is happening simultaneously is this like deep like soul yearning for some type of like spiritual connection maybe or like some type of soul searching that could be coming through like the search for meaning or significance maybe in the way that we've been living our lives or um in our purpose we may also really find ourselves like at a point where we are really searching for some type of more fulfilling purpose as this energy unfolds as well and that may also be sort of what is creating maybe this like crisis oriented or challenge that we need to overcome in some capacity i'm saying this because while we have this grand cross that is setting up in cardinal signs 29 degrees and mars in opposition to saturn we also have the sun coming into an exact um, trine to Neptune. And that is before the sun comes into the exact opposition to Pluto. We currently have Neptune at 28 degrees of Pisces. Pluto is at 30 or 29 degrees of the sign of Capricorn. So the sun will hit the exact trine to Neptune first and then we'll move actually on Saturday the 22nd. This is when the exact grand cross cardinal signs where the sun is exactly square the nodes, exactly opposite Pluto. That happens on uh, Saturday the 22nd and also on that day as well, Venus will station retrograde in the sign of Leo and this is also super significant. We are heading for a rest of the summer, you guys, all about addressing some past issues uh, maybe that have kept us separated from ourselves in some type of a way or have kept us detached from the truth of our own identity or have kept us like self-censoring 
out of fear of disrupting some type of peace or some type of balance or some type of social norm or group cohesion or, you know, reconsidering our feelings or what we've loved or what we've wanted in the past. But there is definitely likely to be an emphasis on uh, people, relationships, what we valued, what we've loved, what we've desired, what we've wanted, or just things and situations from the past generally that are somehow interfering with or playing some type of role in whatever we've got going on. This for the rest, you know, moving throughout the rest of the summer, especially in regards to whatever um, changes we are trying to make to the way that we relate to ourselves now on one hand and also the the way that the changes we are making in the way that we relate to ourselves is impacting our lifestyle our daily habits how we act how we behave with mars in the sign of virgo right now there's definitely like some element or aspect of things that are playing out that is you know causing us to put energy into something to do with again like like changing our lifestyle or like what we're learning or how we're acting or behaving or how we're taking care of ourselves or our well-being or like the results that we are working to produce you know the goals that we are working towards um and in the opposition to Saturn, this is going to be about self-responsibility. Mars is about the self. It's going to be about self-responsibility, self-accountability, like being honest with ourselves as well. Um, acting from like a place of like a higher level of integrity within. This could also be definitely a more like hermit or like introverted type of energy that we are dealing with this week. Even though we have the sun in a trine to Neptune, which generally is like a more like open hearted and compassionate and like altruistic and like empathetic and like wanting to be of service type of energy it can also but but then again that energy can also call call us more towards like meditation and prayer um if you find yourself withdrawing throughout the course of this week like really kind of needing to like ground yourself within yourself or sort of withdraw in yourself or undergo some like you know again this soul searching or some like deep like self analysis, especially in regards to self limiting beliefs, um, this is going to be beneficial. And there are actually um, like mystical experiences, spiritual experiences, spiritual guidance and, you know, strong intuition, uh, you know, maybe like a psychic tendency or just a spiritual knowing on some level, this could be answering our prayers like this type of thing could really be coming through this week and be very tangible and palpable in like our actual 3D experience with the trine playing out between the sun and Neptune as well. Um, so soul searching, um, self analysis, getting in better touch with ourselves, searching for the meaning in, of, in life, like searching for our, our, our true purpose, trying to figure out how we can be of greater service to, you know, maybe ourselves or others or our communities or our families with the sun and the sign of cancer as well. Um, there could be a strong emphasis again on like the roots or the hometown where we've come from, like early childhood, the mother, the family, the community. Also, though, in regards to with the sun coming into the opposition with Pluto and the nodes of the moon, like perhaps what we need to change about our initial programming in terms of like who we are and, you know, our potential. Again, going back to these self-limiting beliefs so that maybe we can move ourselves forward. This is also a period of time right now where I feel like we're like removing layers of distortion that may have like coded our ability to see ourselves and our potential clearly preparing us to move forward in this new direction. Now, another thing that we, it's really important that we sort of understand about how things are coming together right now is that with the south node in the sign of Libra, again, the south node is karma, the south node is the past, the south node is what we're detaching and moving on from. Libra is peace, balance, beauty, like social graces, partners, friendships, connections, money, just like love, desire, pleasure, what we want. Um, it's like, we need to, on one hand, like upgrade perhaps like what it is that we desire what we love what we have a taste for what we value on one hand but again especially with venus ruling the position of the south node associated with the past associated with karma and about to go retrograde herself this is like relationship karma okay karma and relationships that we need to deal with now like things perhaps that we've done in the past in relationships that were never resolved this is the time where they're likely to find some type of closure or resolution
anything unfinished business okay that's how i you know that i feel like is going to be a major theme of this transit of the nodes through um libra and aries but specifically for the rest of the summer with venus retrograde unfinished business and relationship dynamics coming back for closure coming back for resolution another dynamic of this energy and a lesson that we're really probably going to learn over this next couple of years is it's all about coming to a point where we no longer feel the need to follow the crowd and we are no longer basing like our own identity or our own actions or choices or decisions on what other people expect of us or you know what would keep the peace in some type of like social setting or social group this is a year especially moving into 2024 where it's very important that we develop and cultivate an authentic relationship with ourselves that we know ourselves and that we you know understand like how our body works, how our mind works, what we need to be healthy, to feel good, to be happy, to, you know, be like thriving and stimulated and creative and energized to like feel alive. And again, this also goes back to Mars and Virgo right now in the opposition to Saturn. This is also about like what lifestyle changes do I need to make or what behavioral changes or what, um, habits or routines do I need to change to be more responsible to my own energy body, to my own well-being so that I can feel better, so that I can execute better, so that the work that I put into things can glean like better outcomes and better results so that I can be a better version of myself. Simultaneously, this transit of the North Node through the sign of Aries, Chiron is also right now in the sign of Aries. It's about in some capacity, in some area of our lives, gaining a greater sense of self mastery over self, like in regards to ourselves, you know, regardless of how this may be playing out or impacting us personally, um, we're going to, by the time we get to the end of this transit, discover that we are handling ourselves in just a much more, um, masterful and confident way moving forward. This period of time is also going to be about us overcoming a lot of weaknesses, which is also interesting because that concept is kind of coming through with the Mars Saturn opposition as well. It's like, what do we need to overcome or what do we need to change in order to become stronger, to become more resilient in order so that we are, you know, not being controlled by uh, previous weaknesses to the same extent that maybe were in the past, that we're not uh, using excuses, that we are not seeing ourselves as a victim in any type of way, which again goes right back to the North Node transit through the sign of Aries, bringing us back into our power, giving us strength, giving us confidence, self-confidence, and helping us to come to a greater place of ultimately self-mastery again in whatever way that this particular energy is impacting us. So you know, as we are going through this process throughout the course of this week of searching for meaning of this could also be bringing up themes we need to keep in mind as well with the sun Neptune trine surrounding sacrifice, loss, surrender, also cleansing, eroding, washing away, release, letting go. 2023, and I say it all the time, this is a year of cascading endings and beginnings. Yes, we are now in the active phase of the year where these new beginnings are coming into uh, fruition. However, However, there is still this uh, ending energy that is also very present right now as we transition into the uh, things being weighted more on the side of these fresh starts, rebirths, new beginning energy. But with Neptune, the presence of Neptune, remember Saturn is also in the sign of Pisces. We have Neptune and Pisces trining the sun. We have Saturn and Pisces retrograde in the opposition to Mars. Pisces is a sign of surrender. It is a sign of sacrifice. It is a sign of, you know, fading away, washing away, transition, letting go. It can be associated with loss. So on one hand, we may be realizing that maybe that's the challenge that we need to overcome right now, or that's what we're coming up against is like something that we've been holding on to that we are realizing that, you know, if we continue to hold on to this either like false, especially with Saturn or retrograde, this like Pisces energy, Neptune and Saturn, both retrograde and Pisces, this is breaking down illusions. Any like false illusion or false understanding or 
false belief that we've been holding on to that has been keeping us stuck or that has been keeping us held back, this may be something that we need to overcome in this energy right now. And it may be pre presenting like an obstruction or a challenge, but something needs to be overcome as we move forward in this new direction. And it could very much be associated um, with like self-imposed limitations coming from faulty belief systems that again maybe have stemmed from our childhood or you know our family or just like um early like uh early experiences and stuff like that however this is the time with the north node moving into the sign of aries where we are taking back we are we are stepping into the leadership role in our own experience right now and this energy is trying to help us see ourselves more clearly uh again this soul searching vibe so that we can make the necessary changes to become perhaps the self that we have gotten detached from or the self that was never allowed to come into fruition because of whatever pre previous whatever had prevented that from happening so you know we also need to acknowledge the spiritual uh component of the neptune energy as it plays out as well there could be a huge just like like i was mentioning earlier like you know religion or spirituality generally our beliefs intuition synchronicity spiritual connection mystical experience sort of met metaphysical knowledge could also be playing into this somehow we could feel ourselves just more like attuned to the spiritual side of reality you know tuesday wednesday and thursday as we are going through this process but you know <laughs> there is no better indication if we do find ourselves up against a wall if we do find ourselves you know in a vice or you know hitting like a blockage in some way with the sun trying neptune this is a huge opportunity for us to really gain some significant spiritual guidance or connection or inspiration or intuition that can help us in you know what uh, make the change or you know receive the answer get the guidance to overcome whatever it is that we are dealing with so it really does seem the way that this energy is presenting that though you know when we are when we're stuck in a situation you know the way out is up and again, prayer, meditation, visualization, connecting to spirit, like there is likely to be a solution. This is a trine we're talking about as well. The, the, the positive energy that we have going on is the facilitation between the sun, the life force energy and the invisible spiritual energy. So what we're trying to do and grow into with the sun being the fuel that spurs all of growth in life in the trine with the sun is being very supported and facilitated by the spiritual presence. So if, you know, if you need a solution, if you if falling back on faith is what I'm trying to say is what is going to be in our best interest today if we are just sort of not knowing what to do okay this could also be a very emotional and feeling based energy that we have going on this week with this trine this is like an outpouring or an overflow or a facilitation of the emotional energy that could just be sort of like coming out also with the retrograde Saturn and Pisces opposite Mars this is also like us not holding back our passions like not repressing also our anger also well on one hand you know things may be stifled and held back in our ability to move forward in some type of way this is also um acting on strong feelings that maybe have been repressed in the past or have been held back for long periods of time this is again like sort of things just barriers breaking down to things that have previously limited us in the past as well we do want to be careful with the tendency towards self-sacrifice or like a martyr complex that could be coming up in this energy for sure and don't be surprised also if you find yourself in situations or scenarios or doing things that have to do or are revolving somehow around water this week because you know when we have the sun in a trine to neptune people just sort of like are organically naturally doing things or having experiences or in some way connected to you know bodies of water large bodies of water lakes oceans things having to do with water generally or maybe just longer showers or baths so maybe feeling a need to take a bath but connecting to water being around water this will also stimulate the intuition this will also stimulate the spiritual connection spend some time around water if you are um feeling called to do so i will say in the energy today as well now specifically 
I mean, not today, in the energy this week. Specifically Thursday, as I said, this is kind of like the focal point of the week in terms of the energy, although Saturday is really the big show this week because that will be the day of the exact Grand Cross Cardinal Signs, 29 degrees, and we also have Venus going retrograde on Saturday as well. And then on Sunday, we're actually going to have a... <laughs> Mercury Uranus square. So we've got some uh, wild news and information and things going on heading towards the weekend. You're likely to get some very strange news or uh, things just out of the ordinary happening as we get to Sunday. But for Thursday, that is the day when we have both simultaneously Sun exactly trine Neptune and Mars exactly opposite Saturn retrograde. Mars transits are always two days unless Mars is slowing down to go retrograde, in which case they will be longer because it takes Mars approximately two days to transit any one degree. So we're looking at an exact two day activation. So Thursday and Friday will both be Mars exactly opposite Saturn. And I will be putting out another report on Friday that talks about Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and all this big bam, bam, bang, bang, crazy, crazy energy that we have coming at us uh, this weekend. But um, yeah, Thursday is the day uh, where we have the exact aspects that are producing the energy that I've been talking about. I'll report so far for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So, you know, don't be surprised if there is some type of significant like challenge or obstruction or like fierce opposition to like growth or change or progress or what you're trying to do or what you're trying to become or something like that. But I'm telling you guys the results that we do eventually gain after, you know, we've gone through this more challenging challenging period of time. They will be victorious. They will be life-changing. And again, they will bring us to a greater state of self-mastery in some capacity in some area of our lives. We are moving towards a process of individual self-mastery, but it is not happening instantaneously, nor would we want it to happen instantaneously. Because remember, we are also talking about the Chiron energy. This is wisdom gained through experience. This is allowing experience to be our guide. And therefore, you know, we have to go through whatever we need to go through in order to unlock the perspective and the wisdom and the understanding within us to help us come to this greater point which allows us to go through this process as well of this inner transmutation and alchemization where we overcome the states of victimhood where we overcome our initial traumas our initial wounding this is what helps us come to the place of self-mastery so it couldn't possibly be an instantaneous process and there is likely to be a degree of wounding or a degree of trauma or a degree Degree of crisis or degree again of you know pain or challenge that we do need to overcome but through that process of overcoming that is also how we gain the skills the power the wisdom to transform ourselves into this more masterful version of ourselves that is more in alignment with our higher selves that is more in alignment with higher truths and that is more able and capable of co-creating our experiences consciously with God and universe going forward as you guys what do we do on this channel what do we do we look at the energy as it's coming in in the context of where we're going and where we're becoming as a result of these aspects you know as they hit over time over time over time and as they change us the impact of this energy as it's coming in is refining us, is elevating our frequency and is transmuting, alchemizing and transforming us into the vessels of frequency that are more in alignment with the age of Aquarius frequencies that are coming in. So as we go through this process individually, we are helping to usher in this new age by becoming an anchor for the new frequencies associated with the new age coming in. Now, is this happening for every single person on the planet at once just because we have this astrology going on? No, but it's making the small, subtle changes within our energy body based on wherever our current frequency is to help us incrementally evolve on that frequency base level in a way that is conducive to the growth and the uh, maturation of our soul at this point in time. So there's going to be a massive spectrum of where people are at, but all of us in some way, in some capacity for, you know, better or worse for, you know, the, the smallest level to like the greatest changes are going to experience some level of overcoming a state of victimhood that we've held within us, overcoming weaknesses, gaining a sense of confidence and self mastery that helps evolve us on a soul level in some way moving throughout the next year and a half that is on a greater level assisting energetically 
at this point in time, our transition into the age of Aquarius. Okay. So, uh, big times, significant energies. Um, we may not perceive these changes as they're happening, but when we look back and all is said and done, we will be able to pinpoint and say like, okay, I didn't realize it at the time, but that small thing that happened actually over, you know, the years turned into this like crucial moment that altered the current trajectory that I was on and changed things for me somehow. Like that's the general vibe what we're looking at. So, you know, we want to be responsible. We want to view this time as it unfolds with, uh, you know, the respect that it deserves. Um, we don't want to fight or resist against perhaps, you know, the challenges that are presenting themselves right now. We need to surrender to our faith. We need to trust the process and we need to use our energy wisely. We need to be accountable. We need to not hold ourselves back though anymore from our passions or from our truths or from doing what we know is right for us. This is also, I feel like a time of sort of like coming clean about who we've become now, about what we want now, about like how we've changed and who we've grown into. And when I say now, I mean, yes, this week, I mean, yes, this cancer cycle, but I think that this is also going to be a process that is unfolding over the next year and a half. And it, you know, aside from the way that the energy is all presenting, we have symbols today that are also sort of speaking to the same thing in some kind of like <laughs> perfect detail. We have the sun and Neptune in their trine at 28 degrees of Cancer and Pisces. 28 degrees of Cancer where the sun is on Thursday. That Sabine symbol is an Indian girl introduces her college boyfriend to the assembled tribe. And then 28 degrees of Pisces where Neptune is, that Sabian symbol is a fertile garden under the full moon, reveals an abundance of full grown vegetables. So stopping into and being honest about what we've grown or what we've grown into or who we've grown into or who we become and how that's changing, how we are going to live our life. Even maybe if it means breaking from tradition, breaking from like our cultural or our familiar or our society or our social norms. The Indian girl introducing her college boyfriend to the assembled tribe. This is like, you know, taking accountability for who she's become now and for, you know, what it is that she truly desires, even if it means upsetting or disrupting the balance of how things have been for a significant period of time, even if it means breaking from these traditions. And then we have the, you know, the fertile garden under the full moon reveals an abundance of full grown vegetables. It's like we have the full light to see what it is that we have truly grown, cultivated and nourished. Um, maybe like in the darkness, you know, is it's, it's, it's the, it's, in the night and it's being revealed to us in a full moon. It's like, this is what has been, you know, growing maybe like under the surface of things or under the cover or that I've been like hiding or holding back. It's like now it's being exposed. And not only that, like I'm taking accountability for it. I'm standing in my truth and I'm not apologizing anymore for the way that this is going to change things going forward. So I feel like that's powerful symbolism actually coming through for the Sun Neptune in the context of the overall story that is playing out right now. And also we have Mars and Saturn in opposition at seven degrees of Pisces and Virgo. Seven degrees of Virgo, that saving symbol is a harem. And seven degrees of Pisces where Saturn is illuminated by a shaft of light. A large cross lies on rocks surrounded by sea and mist. So how have our beliefs kept us trapped or enslaved to rules or ideologies or circumstances that have been keeping us trapped or have been holding us back from exhibiting and standing in the truth of our own identity? And what inspiration do we need to see or to come to now to find the light of our own truth or to open to the possibility of another way of life, which again goes back to these this need for lifestyle changes and readjustments that are a better reflection of our personal truth and what we truly need to be healthy, to be whole, and to grow at this point in time. 
so I feel like those Sabian symbols are like kind of telling as well and ultimately it's all about I feel like this is all sort of boiling down to simmering down to breaking down beliefs that have entrapped us in lifestyles determined by others and not in and of our own making we are at the point of making personal choices that are right for us circling right back around now to this soul searching vibe it's like we're searching for meaning we're searching for purpose we're sp searching for spiritual connection we're searching for like authentic truth and simultaneous to that we're discovering how our beliefs and how our ideas and understandings from the past have kept us trapped sequestered closed off from you know that which is really true and authentic to us and at this point in time universe really wants us to snap back to that and to shake ourselves out free ourselves from situations that you know may have tried to limit our own personal self-expression moving forward so that's what I have to say today you guys that's the astrology as it's coming through this is a uh, again like a very very big important week in the context of just what's happening right now and from now through the rest of the summer things are definitely probably going to change and again things from the past love money relationships connectionships friendships values preferences desires uh that are either unresolved or also libra is also about the scales and justice that have been lacking balance that have been lacking harmony that have been distorted or inverted in some type of way um <laughs> this is what uh we're going to be working to resolve or to free ourselves from as well uh throughout this period of time so all there that's the astrology let's talk about the tarot now the message that is coming out for the tarot cards is also you know it's really speaking to a lot of the same things we've got the queen of wands coming out first followed by the um the knight of pentacles the fire that is stirring and that is being lit or sparked or ignited within us right now, like this is what we need to follow. And this is also talking about, this is talking about our creative potential. This is talking about our purpose. Also, this is also talking about intuition that might be coming to us as well. But there is a slow, gradual process of manifestation that is underway right now. We are moving towards something, but it's like one step at a time. It's um, like slow and steady does the trick. And again, like, it's happening but this is likely to be a gradual process now the next cards we have the seven of cups in reverse we've got the four of pentacles in reverse and we've got the two of swords in reverse and then we have the ace of cups on the back of the deck when i put all of these cards together it has a lot to do with what i was saying before about coming to realize and coming to discover that once we step into our power and once we decide you know who we are and who we can become if only and you know start putting in like the small daily steps to get there it's really leading us to this brand new opportunity in terms of relationships in terms of feeling there's going to be some for all that we need to let go of, for all that we need to release, for all the disillusionment that we might be coming to right now, for all that we realize that we've been holding on to that maybe hasn't been good for us or hasn't been supporting us or hasn't been aligned to us, um, there is prepared, ready, and waiting for us a much more fulfilling either relationship connection or creative project or potential or relationship or connection to ourselves that is ready to fill that void. But it has a lot to do with us choosing ourselves, right? With the North Node moving to the sign of Aries. Choosing ourselves, choosing our potential, choosing our creativity, allowing again that like spark or that like fire within us to be seen and to be acknowledged and to you know be fed almost and to be moved towards we've got the queen of wands and then we've got the knight of pentacles like looking right at her holding the golden coin like we need to move towards even if it's just in small ways again this is also reminding me of switching or adjusting our lifestyle in ways that is supporting our process of self-empowerment right now in alignment with our creative potential or in alignment also with our heart you know what we have to give perhaps on a heart-based level or also the intuitive nudges 
challenges and urges that are coming to us right now following that moving towards that in a physical tangible practical way putting in you know doing small things each day to move ourselves forward in that direction while simultaneously we are releasing the illusion seven of cups in reverse that perhaps we've been holding on to four of pentacles that have kept us stuck two of swords in reverse unable to make a decision unable to see the truth unable to you know choose a direction and like move forward in alignment with that we need to release that which has been distorted in terms of our perception of ourselves and you know what we want to attain or like false ideals anything like that and what we need to really focus on and embrace and move towards is the truth of this of ourselves that is being ignited within us like i said and that is really opening up the door to us for like a whole new emotional beginning or a brand new relationship or a brand new connection or some type of you know the birth of fulfillment for us in one area of our lives or another so this energy is trying to bring us that which will truly fill us up on that soul base level again these like soul searching themes coming through but we've got to release ourselves from any distortions illusions false perceptions that have been keeping us stuck and simultaneous to that we've got to make an active effort in small ways to move towards that which is feeding our soul and feeding our heart and making us feel alive and like lighting that fire within us so that's the tarot message coming through today. I'm going to grab one more card now. This is a synchronicity card. God, spirit, universe, what is some advice that we can use as we are moving through this energy? What do we need to know? I mean, it is a really significant week. What does this say? Root out negativity. Probably the best advice we could get right now. Also, it says root out, pull down, and destroy. Jeremiah 110. You must root out, pull down, and destroy all of your negative attitudes, false beliefs, erroneous opinions, and ill will of every kind. You must completely alter the way you do things in your home and business. This is what I'm talking about. We need to change our lifestyles, our habits, our routines, our patterns. And it has to be coming from the place of being ready to, you know, not fight back against the changes that are presenting themselves right now. It says, do everything from a standpoint of the law of love and divine harmony. You will experience an enormous change in all phases of your life. You will meet all problems with faith in God and you will overcome. This is the perfect card in association with all of these challenges and all of these obstacles that we may be up against over this next couple of days. But we do have the trine going on, Sun and Neptune, and Jupiter is also in a supportive role to both Saturn and Mars right now. I should say that as well so again falling back on our faith when there's no way out the way out is up okay and it specifically says root out pull down and destroy all of your negative attitudes false beliefs I feel like that's one of been one of the major themes of this report so far so far and erroneous opinions and ill will of every kind so a lot of maybe these challenges that we are coming up against over this period of time could have to do with overcoming and conquering becoming the victor becoming the hero over our own lower dimensional components of ourselves, um, overcoming our ego, and perhaps letting go and releasing maybe some of the more negative things that we have been harboring that have actually, you know, enemies internally create enemies externally. So I feel like the message is that if, you know, our test here is to see how able we are to overcome these challenges without allowing them to pull us down into the lower dimensions of ourselves. You will experience enormous changes in all phases of your life. You will meet all problems with faith in God and you will overcome. So our faith is our ticket this weekend, you guys. And again, we have so much spiritual influence assisting us in this process. So that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you liked this video. I hope there was something in here that was of value to you. If you did like it, please give me a thumbs up, you guys. Subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel grow when you do that. Um, puts it in front of other people. Like it helps me in terms of the algorithm them so i really appreciate if you guys subscribe to my channel um give me a thumbs up also i think i already said that if you like the video and share it with your friends if you think that they would also be interested in this type of content um also i have a facebook page a facebook group and an instagram those are in my description box below leave me comments you guys too and i, I post this uh picture of this whiteboard if you want to know what is on this whiteboard it's posted in my facebook group but also as i was saying please leave me comments you guys too as well if you're having a 
experiences that line up with what I'm talking about in these videos. I would love to hear about it. Comment section below. Again, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Come back with me on Friday, you guys. Uh, we'll have a weekend video out, and this is another really big one. Grand Cross, Cardinal Signs, 29 degrees, Sun, Pluto, <laughs> nodes, and uh, Venus going retrograde. Again, there are... There's some unfinished business that needs to be resolved and we're about to be figuring out what that is and I will be here to talk about it. You should be here too. You don't want to miss it. I will see you then guys. Have a beautiful day and until next time. Bye guys.